Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between stretching your hamstrings and stretching your sciatic nerve. So I recently released a quiz here on uh, my Facebook and Instagram where you should follow me and participate in the quizzes, and uh, it was asking about the difference between these two poses and if one of them perhaps was not actually a hamstring stretch. So I'll explain that, and uh, be sure to stick around until the end of the video because I'll explain how to feel the difference between a nerve stretch stretch and a muscle stretch, and I'll offer some suggestions on how to modify your yoga poses to be smarter and safer. So let's get to it. Hey, real quick, do like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notifications on future videos and share it with your friends if they like anatomy. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, so this started with an anatomy quiz on my uh, Instagram and Facebook. Basically, I wanted to know which of these is not really a hamstring stretch. There were a lot of ideas, some of them wrong, some of them right, some of them in between, bringing up ideas that were true, but not necessarily what I'm going for. So I'll address those middle of the road things. So essentially, what we want to see is what's different between these two poses. Well, let's start the opposite. What's the same? The hip angle is the same. So the angle of the hips is exactly the same in both of these poses. And therefore, um, combined with the fact that both poses have straight knees, that means that length on the hamstrings muscles is exactly the same, and therefore the stretch on the hamstrings is exactly the same. So you might argue that they are both hamstring stretches. And you would be right, that is technically true. That's not what I'm going for here. I want you to say, what is the difference between them? So you're, you're right if you said that. However, there's a big important thing that I don't want you to miss, and I'll explain that. So what is the difference between these two poses? Why would you do A instead of B? Well, a lot of people don't do B because um, B is less intense, right? So a lot of people think that um, having the heart lifted and the toes pointing, you feel less intense, right? So if you round your back and you pull your toes, then it feels more intense and therefore it's a better stretch and you're better at yoga and you rock. Well, the reason you feel more of a stretch is because you're stretching your sciatic nerve. So the, um, up, up, up. the top pose is not a hamstring stretch. Now, some people would argue that the reason that uh, it feels like a better stretch, and they would argue that it's a better hamstring stretch, is because what happens uh, is because they, they know something about kinetic chains and anatomy trains. And so what happens is you've got this front line, this uh, deep superficial back line. So you've got basically you're pulling the calf muscles under and up, and then you're pulling your spinal muscles around and down. And that means you're lengthening out the whole backside of your body. And that means you're getting a better stretch in the hamstrings. Theoretically, that might be possible. The impact of that compared with the impact of changing the pelvic angle and the angle of the knees is minuscule. It is tiny. So pulling on the feet and telling me that it, you are getting a better hamstring stretch when you haven't actually lengthened uh, the, the hamstrings muscles and changed the angles of the hip and knee joints is, is a very debatable argument. And I, I understand it. And I'm a big fan of anatomy trains, but I don't think that that's a valid, um, I don't think that that's really a big part of what's going on here. It might be happening, but it's small. So what's really happening here in, in spades was really like a big deal is that it's a sciatic nerve tensioner. When you lift the head and you uh, point the toes, then you are taking tension off of the nerves. Whereas when you round the head and you try to touch your head to your knees and you pull the toes towards your face, you are putting a ton of tension on the sciatic nerve, your spinal column, and that is anchored to your brain. So it's pulling your brain down into your spinal column. Not literally, please, I'm being dramatic, but it's, it is tensioning that whole system. So if you thought that you were doing this pose here and that you were getting a better stretch in your hamstrings, you are not. That is not true. All right, let's move on. Why do people do pose uh, the rounded one? Well, it feels more intense, right? The This uh, top one feels easier. So people don't like easy. They want to be good at yoga. They think that being flexible means you're good at yoga. Well, guess what? It feels less intense because you're not stretching and pulling on your spinal cord, brain, and uh, sciatic nerves. So 
Let's talk about compression sites. Basically what's happening is when you change the joint angles, then you're taking your spinal cord or your um, nerves and you're hooking them around, you're wrapping them around a bone, a joint somewhere, and it's you're stretching the nerve over a joint and then it's getting compressed. So you're tensioning the nerve over a joint and then it compresses at that nerve, okay? So you see that at the uh, spine, the hip, the knee, the ankle, and the toes. And in Paschimottanasana classically, we're doing all of these things at once, which means this would be max tension. If you do all of these things at once, you get maximum tension on the spinal cord, brain, and, uh, and nerves. So first compression site, the spine. Basically, you've got your um, anchor. This uh, Your brain here is an anchor. It's stuck in your skull. So if you bring your head forward and down and you round your back, then essentially what you're doing is since the uh, in blue is pictured your uh, vertebral column. So if you round your back forward, well, that's going to block the, the spinal, uh, spinal column. And so it has to stretch out over the vertebral bodies, and then it has to stretch down as well. So as you're wrapping it around the, the column. So it's getting longer. That's the end of the deal there. So the, um, the spine, when you flex the spine, you're stretching the spinal column and the nerves. Let's just, uh, in the future, say nervous system, spinal column and sciatic nerves. We're just going to call it all the nervous system, okay? As opposed to the muscular system. So uh, the hip, flexion of the hip creates compression of the um, of the nervous system. So here's your femur. In green is pictured your nervous system. Uh, when you take the hip into flexion, it would look like this. So the right image, we're looking at this person from behind them, and we're seeing the right side of their body. So if we, uh, here's your greater trochanter now, if we take the uh, leg up into flexion, then what we see is that we have to wrap the nervous system around here. We wrap that sciatic nerve around and it gets hung up and compressed right there. The knee, straightening the knee, extension of the knee compresses the sciatic nerve. Here's the lower leg. If we were to take it back into uh, a bent position, then what we would see is that the uh, nerves here can kind of be all chill, but that when you straighten and you go this way, when you straighten the leg, then the uh, nerves get taut, they get taut, they wrap around and they have to go down. They get stretched up and down. And so uh, you see compression on the back of the knee. Next, the ankle. Um, dorsiflexion of the ankle stretches the uh, the nerves. So now we're talking tibial nerve. But uh, so here is uh, the lateral view, and then uh, the side view is the bigger picture. So the uh, tibial nerve wraps around the inside of the the ankle at what we call the tarsal tunnel. It wraps around basically this area, ee, uh, this area right here. And when you take the foot and you lift it up into dorsiflexion, then you see compression at the tarsal tunnel. It stretches the nerves. It stretches them because you're pulling the nerves down and this way. Okay. Well, technically, I guess it's going up. But anyway, you're compressing them at the tarsal tunnel. The toes. Uh, the toes are going to be stretching the nervous system with extension. So if you lift the toes, then you are stretching the nervous system because the, uh, the nerves go all the way to the each toe, right? And then what happens is you're pulling on the toe up and around. And so then you get uh, that you're pulling on the nerves. So you lift the toe up. If you grab your big toe with your peace fingers, you're stretching the nervous system. So put it all together. We need some tension in order to stretch the hamstrings. Okay, tension isn't isn't evil. It's not bad, but we only need this tension. 
We only need two of them. So how do we reduce the tension on the nervous system and, uh, and then still get a hamstring stretch? I'm not a big fan of stretching, but if you're going to do it, please do it right. So uh, we want to, if we want this to happen, we would extend the spine and neck. We'd lift up, lift the heart, look up, lift the chest, become long through the spine. And that will detension the nervous system. We will tilt the pelvis forward, which does technically put more tension on the nervous system. But we need, again, these two here, we need that tension in order to get the hamstring stretch. But the other parts, we don't need any of the other joints to be locked out. Okay, We don't need the, the neck, the ankles, the feet. We don't need any of those on board to get a good hamstring stretch. Okay, Because the hamstrings don't cross those joints. So um, straighten or micro bend the knees. I prefer a micro bend. Plant or flex the ankles. Point the, the feet away from you and stop grabbing your damn toes. It's only stretching your nervous system, not your hamstrings. Tension is a spectrum. So the point here is that if you, we, I just named five sites of compression. I just suggested that you put tension on two out of five of those uh, sites. The more sites that you put compression on, the more you're tensioning the nervous system, the more you're putting a strain on it. The less sites, the fewer sites, then the less stress that you put on the nervous system. It's really simple. As a, um, and when I say stress on the nervous system, I mean literally a stretch on the nervous system. So uh, each element that you take away reduces some spinal cord and nerve tension. So if you really want to fold forward, at least look up or at least point your toes. Okay, at least do that. Nerve flossing is a technique that as a yoga teacher, you are not licensed to prescribe. I don't think it's technically a, a, a protected thing, but it's don't do it. Don't get, uh, don't, you're not trained to do this if you're just a yoga teacher. So please, 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 please leave this to pr professionals. I'm just telling you what nerve flossing is because it's very interesting. Um, and so what's happening is we have two poses here. One, um, the green indicates a uh, reduction of tension and the blue whoops the blue here indicates a uh, increase in tension okay so blue is increase in tension so in the first pose when we take the feet to towards the body we're increasing tension but when we lift the heart and we look up we're decreasing tension and then we flip, we go from one pose to the other, we go to the next pose here, and we round the back, which increases tension, but we point the feet, which reduces tension. Therefore, it's like we're taking a rope, you grab the rope on both ends of the rope, and when you pull on one end of the rope, the other end of the rope goes with it. And so you're going back and forth, but the, the length of the rope doesn't change. In yoga, when we do Paschimottanasana, we're doing the opposite. We're grabbing both ends of the rope and we're pulling. We're playing tug of war with the whole damn nervous system. Why would we do that? Yes, there is a reason to do that, but your doctor should tell you to do it. This is not something that yoga teachers should just be uh, doing. So what are you feeling in a stretch? How do you tell the difference between feeling a muscle stretch and a nerve stretch? Basically, the key here is that the muscle stretch was gonna, is going to stay in the same spot, and it's not going to feel like sharp or shooty or any of that business, tingly, any of that, and you're not going to feel it uh, move. So it, nerve tensioning is uh, where you're going to feel electric sensations, numbness, tingling, shooting sensations, burning, hot heat. Um, uh, you, know, you're, you might feel it go up your spine or down your legs or into your toes or your arms. Um, you might start to piss off your nerves and develop sciatica type symptoms where you feel pain down the back of your leg, maybe into your feet. If you feel any of that, you're probably stretching nerves and you probably want to go ahead and stop doing that because clearly you're pissing your nerves off. So back to the original question, hamstring or a sciatic nerve stretch? Well, I hope that this video taught you that um, the uh, classic version of Paschimottanasana is really a nerve tensioning activity and that we can modify our anatomy to get better results, target the muscles more appropriately, have a safer practice, a smarter practice, and um, 
and, and, and eliminate this uh, notion of forcefully flat, uh, stretching our bodies out in the first place. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, please do like uh, this video and uh, subscribe to my channel so you get notifications on future videos. Um, share this video with your friends so that they can share in on the anatomy fr uh, fun. And then uh, subscribe to or follow me on Instagram so that you can participate in the quizzes as I unveil them. So thank you for joining me and I will see you on the next video.